Hey there, YouTube. Welcome to Drake Array Gaming. Today, we're going to be talking about Warzone FPS boosting, exactly kind of what settings you need to set to make sure you get the most bang for your buck and performance out of your PC desktop gaming rig, your system, whatever you call it. So as usual, no BS, no fluff. Let's get right to it and increase your performance. Come with me. Okay, just like in Warzone 1, there's a lot of similarities between what you need to set up to make sure your system is good to go. Um, I'd also like to talk about something, uh, first of all, we talked about in Modern Warfare 2 uh, boost video as well for FPS, but what we need to do is make sure your system's graphics or uh, car drivers are up to date, uh, your Windows drivers are up to date. You can easily do that through your GeForce Experience panel. Uh, make sure, you know, you can just go in here and click check for updates, etc. I think I have a pending one right now as well. Um, now, some older drivers may work better with Warzone as they continue to patch it but um it, it is pretty stable at this point now that's why i'm making this video now um but i have been actually using an older version but looks like as of today the 527.56 is the latest one uh video i also talked about utilizing something called hard disk sentinel it's an application i use that automatically checks the smart data uh which is a collection of data in your hard drive and it'll let you know how much life and other types of things you have uh for your hard drive here um, it's free. You can get a free version and it'll monitor your hard drives and let you know the health. So you can keep an eye on that as well. Uh, corrupted files and things like that with a game as big as, as Warzone with the, you know, 160 to 200 gigs. Uh, it's a lot of files. You want to make sure your drive health is he healthy. Your system is healthy. Run a mem test. Do different things like that. Um, now, if you're absolutely sure you have no system issues and everything's up to date, then let's jump right into it. Uh, you want to go to um, first thing we can check. Go into Battle.net. The easiest way is to click right here. This gear icons. You want to go to show and explore. It'll bring up the Explorer window with all your game files. Um, now, inside this folder here, in the Call of Duty folder, you'll have a retail folder, uh, and you'll have these different cache um, folders. Now, um, if you want to, you can get rid of these cache folders manually and reload your caches in game, uh, but it's up to you. You have to see what works for you best. Um, now, you can delete these and you can do a scan repair to fix these and reload your shaders in game. And this may help you with some corrupt shaders, uh, some shaders that aren't loading right or maybe affecting FPS, things like that. From time to time, especially after a big update like Season 1 Reloaded, it can help to get rid of your cache folders. And then what you can do after you delete those cache folders, if you click the gear icon here, there is a scan and repair option. I'm in game right now, so it's not available, but you can check for updates, make sure it's updated, and then scan and repair. Um, it'll replace those files, and then um, and then in game, you can actually restart your shaders, which I'll show you in a second. Um, the other area I want to show you, uh, don't mind my Windows 7 skin here, but uh, if you go into your documents folder, your Call of Duty folder, your players folder, and then there is a COD options three COD 22 file. So this is a config file for all of the modes. Each mode has their own file, uh, their own config file, but they all read from this one master file. Mine's called options.3.cod22. If you go in there and you go all the way to the bottom um, and you go to uh, the thread worker count here, so I've talked about this in Modern Warfare. This also works for Warzone. So what you wanna do, so this worker count is actually the setting right here in between these quotes, it says you can utilize one to 16. Now it's actually looking for the physical cores in your system. Sometimes this is not set right. If you don't know what the physical cores are in your system, you can right click here, go to task manager on your bar there, go to performance and then look at your cores and your logical processors. So your actual cores is 12. Um, so I went ahead and set mine to the maximum uh, physical cores that I have in my CPU. Um, and again, that's on your task manager and your performance tab and then it's down right here. So uh, now it's 12 may not work. Try eight, try six, try four. But uh, in Warzone, depending on which CPU you have, Intel or AMD and how many cores you have, changing this number can highly increase your performance. So I recommend experimenting with it and finding what's best for you. Uh, a good place to start is just start with your maximum amount of cores. Um, Warzone 2 seems to be multi-thread optimized, uh, multi-core optimized, excuse me, and it seems to be working okay. The next option here below it is uh, your video memory scale or GPU memory your GRAM, it's set at 85. Now you can change this in game, but you can also change it here. Um, some this The old game used to have a memory bleed issue. Um, this one seems to uh, be a little bit better, but it really depends on your system and your type of RAM. You can try changing this from 0 0.50, 0 0.55, all the way up to 0. Uh, you know, 100, uh, and see if it helps you. Uh, these are the, the ranges here that you can set it to. Uh, but this one definitely makes the biggest performance difference. And then all you'll do is hit file save and be done there and there um, another location um, for shaders and things like that you can check and get rid of is your blizzard cache 
um, or any other cache files for the system. Maybe you need to even do a clean uninstall of the game. Um, but when you do that, you want to go to these file locations in Documents Call of Duty Players or Call of Duty or Documents Call of Duty, or make sure you actually go to uh, where I have mine installed, which is E Call of Duty is where I have the game or your program files Call of Duty folder and delete the whole folder after you uninstall it. I would reboot my computer and then install the game again. Um, and make sure if you're having any performance major hits, this is the, the foundation of success. Once you've done all these things and checked all these things, let's just go ahead and jump right into my, my graphic settings. Uh, so I'm in a full screen exclusive. This definitely makes a performance difference. Um, I actually changed up my streaming setup so that I could always run the game in full screen exclusive because it definitely helps with the FPS in Warzone 2. Um, so make sure your monitor set right. This uh, Your graphics card set right. If you have multiple, your screen refresh rate is set to the maximum. This is uh, my display resolution, it's like 1920 by 1080 right now. I'm not using any dynamic resolution. My aspect ratio is automatic, V-Sync is off, V-Sync menus are off. Uh, I'm using custom frame rate limits. Um, you can go unlimited if you want or whatnot, but I don't like my system generating extra frames I don't need, so I set it to 250 with like a, a 10 FPS cap uh, room above my monitor hertz. Um, this is where you can restart your shader optimization I was talking about earlier. Um, so after you've done a scan repair and deleted your shader folders and all that, uh, you can restart your shaders here if you're having any further issues. Um, all this is pretty much default here and I don't use any HDR. Now let's talk about uh, quality. Um, I actually bumped it up. This is probably not, this is not the best way to bump up your render res, but I bumped it up here to do some experimentation. Uh, you, if you want 1440 res, just run it in 1440 on your, dis on your display. Um, you can't experiment with this though, so I make sure I recommend running this at 100 with your your actual resolution. Um, upscale and sharpening is off, but I do run a filmic 2AA just to help with some smoothing. And then uh, anti-aliasing is low. The video memory scale 0.85, like we looked at in the config file. And then we're looking at texture resolution normal, filter anisotropic low, nearby level of detail low, distant level of detail low, clutter draw resistance is short, uh, particle is low, very low on particle quality level. I don't like the bullock impact and sprays or the persistent damage layers. You can add these if you want. That is uh, a preference. Shader quality on overall medium for me with tessellation off. And then I have on-demand texture streaming off, streaming quality normal. Uh, volumetric deferred physics and water caustics are all low and off. Um, shadow map res is normal. Screen space shadows is off. Spot shadow quality low. Spot cache medium. Particle lighting low. Ambient occlusion off. Screen space reflections are off. A lot of different settings in here. A lot of different settings. Uh, static reflection quality is low. Weather grid volumes is off. Everything else after that is off, 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 off. No film grain, no weapon blur, no motion blur, no depth of field, no NVIDIA reflex low latency. Now, you can try this to see if it helps you get some more FPS. It may. So also play with this one. Put it on, on plus boost, and see if I'm experimenting right now with it off. I didn't see a whole lot of uh, gain with it on. So now this depends on your system. So definitely play with this one as well. I hope this video helped you out, and I hope to see you get some more FPS in game. I'm running about 150 or plus right now. The game is very intensive, and running these things has helped me a lot. I hope they help you too. I'm Drake Array here to help the gaming community, and I'll see you next time.